jugular chain neck dissection and wide field total laryngectomy. In this project, we described the procedure of removal of the larynx with its attached prelaryngeal strap muscles and the lymph nodes in the jugular chain, levels 2, 3, and 4 on the ipsilateral side, as well as the lymph nodes in the tracheoesophageal groove and the thyroid lobe on the same side. This is a patient with a neglected left transglottic tumor, stage T4N0M0. Originally, in December of 2019, the tumor was a stage 2 supraglottic cancer, stage, stage T2N0M0. After a delay of one and a half a year due to restrictions of surgeries from the coronavirus pandemic, but mainly due to the patient's concern of contracting the virus inside the hospital, he came back in June 2021 with Strider. After an emergency MRI, we performed the surgery immediately after tracheostomy with local anesthesia. Initial laryngoscopic exam of the primary tumor at first visit on December 2019, stage 2. Final CT in June 2021. Observe the 4 by 4 cm size of the obstructive tumor spreading to the preepiglottic and paraglottic space. Also, note that the tumor is growing into tissues beyond the larynx, into the neck muscles, and that the tumor has infiltrated the thyroid cartilage. A stage 4A cancer. Transverse incision along an upper neck skin crease in the region of the thyrohyoid membrane extending from the posterior border of the sternocleidomastoid muscle on one side of the neck to that on the other side of the neck. The platysma is divided throughout the entire length of the incision and the upper and lower skin flaps are elevated. Exposure of the anterior border of the sternocleidomastoid muscle from the region of the posterior belly of the digastric cephalaid to the insertion of the sternal head caudat. External jugular vein ligation. I start the dissection from the left submandibular triangle. Digastric anterior belly and submandibular gland. Digastric posterior belly. I pull upwards the posterior belly. Observe the external jungular vein ligated, posterior belly and sublingual nerve. Following the posterior belly of the digastric muscle, the stylomandibular ligament is transected. Ligation of lingual vein crossing the hypoglossal nerve.
Now I prepare and cut the homohyoid muscle as far as it crosses the sternocleidomastoid muscle. and I focus my attention posterior superiorly to find the accessory nerve. The 11 cranial nerve. and the boundaries of level 2 above and below the 11 nerve to be cleared. I continue with the spinal accessory maneuver, that is, in other words, dissection and removal of the tissue lying posterior and superior to the nerve, level 2b, in continuity with the rest of the specimen. The fibrofatty tissue lying posterior and superior to the nerve is passed beneath the nerve. and I start clearing the level 2A. I prepare and find the internal jugular vein laterally. I pass the specimen laterally to have access to hypoglossal cranial nerve, common facial vein, internal jugular vein, vagus cranial nerve, Open carotid sheath. Now I move to level three. and I remove the tissue above the cervical roots. Level four. I clear level four 
while the assistant opens the field to the supraclavicular fossa with a deep Langenberg retractor. I dissect the fascia over the prelangular muscles and I pass the dissected tissue underneath the jugular vein. And I catch it with Leahy forceps to be included in the unblocked specimen. I ligate the common facial vein Now I move the specimen medially to access the carotid artery laterally. I ligate the superior thyroid artery at the left side, the side of the thyroid lobe removal. The specimen with the levels of neck dissection. The next step is total laryngectomy. I secure flaps to the drapes. Dissection of the infrahyoid muscles as near to the manubrium as possible and skeletonization of the larynx. Thyroidismus ligation. Ligated right thyroid lobe to be preserved with its superior thyroid vessels. Thyrohyoid membrane identification. and ligation of superior laryngeal artery, vein, and nerve. The larynx is grasped with a laryngeal hook 
and is rotated to reveal the pharyngeal muscles. The inferior constrictor muscle is detached from the posterior edge of the thyroid cartilage bilaterally with electrocautery. Superior cornu of the thyroid cartilage is prepared and cut bilaterally to facilitate larynx mobilization. Grasping the hyoid bone with a towel forceps, I pull it anteriorly and I detach the suprahyoid muscles from the bone with an electrocautery. The major cornu of hyoid bone is prepared and removed bilaterally, paying special attention to the adjacent lingual artery. The free edge of the epiglottis is grasped with alice forceps. Now I put on a headlight and uh, I move behind the patient's head. Langenberg's retractors are placed in such a manner as to offer the surgeon unobstructed visual access to the tumor. With the index finger, I palpate the pharyngeal mucosa and I cut above my finger as far as possible from the tumor. and as close to the larynx as to save enough mucosa for pharyngeal reconstruction. Horizontal cut on the posterior surface of the cricoid and separation of esophageal wall from the trachea. The horizontal cut and the detached esophageal wall.
left thyroid lobe. Mobilization of left thyroid lobe and lymph nodes in the left tracheoesophageal groove. The final cut on tracheal lumen is beveled upwards in order to create a wide tracheostoma. The surgical field is rinsed with copious amounts of uh, normal saline and the surgical team changes gloves. The pharyngostoma. Closure of pharyngostoma in a T-way. Marking its boundaries with six mosquitoes. and continuous submucosal sutures as a first layer.
The second and third layers are placed with interrupted Vicryl 3.0 sutures. Removal of a disc of skin and subcutaneous tissue 2.5 by 2.5 cm around the tracheostoma. and creation of a wider tracheostoma, the silk number one. Two vacuum drains, metal suture clips. This video is for educational purposes only. Thank you for watching.